Hi guys, Tracy here. I'm going to be picking a kit from my stash today, so I thought I would share it with you guys. I'm here at my paper cubes. My paper, most of my pattern paper is in three these uh, four shelves in one of my recollections cubes, and I'm going to be picking some papers to use for the scrapbooking that I'll be doing for International Scrapbooking Day. So Moira O'Reilly and myself are hosting a crop over at Mercy Tiara's 27 Day Challenge Facebook group, and uh, you guys are all welcome to come along and play with us for the day, which is May 7th, which is International Scrapbooking Day. So I'm just going to pick a kit, and I thought I would share the process with you guys because I do get a lot of questions about picking a kit from your stash. So, and I don't get a chance to do that very often. So I'm going to do it now and I'll bring you guys along with the process. So let me get started. I'm also going to be scrapbooking with the Atwell collection, which I have right here. It looks like this. And I've scrapbooked with that before, and I will be scrapbooking on International Scrapbooking Day with that, with that collection. Um, but I also plan to scrapbook from my stash. So I'm going to pick a kit right now that will include enough supplies for me to do three or four or maybe five layouts. That's my goal. And so if you were hoping to scrapbook more on International Scrapbooking Day, you would probably want to pick more than what I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick more than I think I need though because I like to have choice. So I'm going to put this away and then we can get started. So here we are at my paper cubes and I have paper stored in a couple of different ways. These, this cube, this shelf is mostly all collections and they're actually mostly old collections. And then this cube has a couple of newer collections but even they are not very new. And then it has a whole hunk of Studio Calico papers. I bought a couple of Studio Calico collections and I find that they all coordinate really well with one another so I tend to keep them together. And then there is a section that is all either wood grain, ledger paper, or, or um, map paper and kind of neutrals that would be okay for backgrounds. So that's what that shelf is all about. What I'm going to be picking from today is mostly from this stack of papers right here. This is my unsorted recent pattern paper collection. So these are all things that I either bought separately because I really liked a single piece of paper or they are, I'm just going to fan them out so you can have a sense of what kinds of papers are in here. Um, or they're leftovers from kits that have come to me over the past year or so. The idea that the way that I usually store my paper if it's not by collection is by color. And so this is my sorted paper. This has, I sort it by the color of the rainbow and I have these tabs here. Um, so this is my color sorted paper. And I do have a video that talks about how I sort my paper and why I do it that way. So you can check that out. I'll try to remember to link it in the information section for this one. But when I'm picking a kit from my stash, I start by picking a cup, either one or two, or as many as I can narrow it down to, inspiration pieces. So these would be papers that stand out as, ah, oh, I love that paper, I have to use that paper. And then I go from there. So I'm going to start by taking a quick look through my pattern paper. I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer so you can see what I see. And I'm going to speed you up because this can be a long process. Okay, so right off the bat, I've decided to have start with two piles. These are some neutral papers that I'm pretty sure I'm going to want to include in my kit. So these are fantastic, fancy papers that I know I'm going to want to use. Um, and then I have another pile of potential stars that would be kind of like... The, the problem with these is that these are too neutral to base any decisions off of. So neutral awesome papers that I want to use and then less neutral awesome papers that I want to use. So that's how I'm starting and I have a whole pack of paper here that I love. So I'm going to go back to fast forward and show you the process. <music> Ok, 
Okay, so I'm back and I basically have two different directions that this could go. I could move in the bright, colorful, lime green, bright yellow, bright turquoise kind of direction, which is the direction I'm kind of leaning in. Or I could go in the turquoise red yellow um, direction, which I love this color scheme. If you guys know me, especially watching some recent videos, I've talked a lot about this color scheme. It's one of my favorites. It's also the color scheme that is really prominent in the Atwell collection, which is what I'm going to be scrapping with this week as well, or this month. So I think I'm going to not do that. One thing that I've noticed from going through my pack of my stack of, of unsorted papers is that most of them are actually not spotlight papers. Most of them are not awesome patterns that you can use to inspire another uh, color, like that you can use as inspiration for your color scheme. Most of them are single color papers or kind of supporting papers. So papers that are not awesome in and of themselves, but they make good companions for other papers. So if I, so if I wanted, you know, if this one isn't working for me because I'm already going to be using that color scheme. And if I didn't want to, I, I might just go with this one. But if I wanted some other ideas, another thing that I could do is I could, I could break into one of the collections that I have still in collection format and take uh, an inspiration piece from one of those collections. So how, I, I don't think I'm going to do that, but how I would do that is I might say, okay, let's see, let's have a look at these. Sorry, my, pardon my head for a second. But let's say um, we have this, oh, what haven't I used for a while? Let's say Dear Lizzie Lucky Charm. I don't know what I have left from Lucky Charm because I use, that's a very old collection. But let's just say there's a piece in here that I love. If there was a piece in here that I loved, I probably would have used it by now. But what I'm looking for is a paper that has the color scheme that I'm looking for or the, a, a color scheme that kind of hits me. So it's not going to be in Lucky Charm, which doesn't really surprise me. I'm not a huge Dear Lizzie fan. So, okay, how about this creative agenda? So let's say I love this floral, which I do. I could use this as inspiration and then go to all my other papers looking for this. Um, some of them might come from that collection, but I'm hoping that a lot of them would come from this chunk of papers that were unsorted that I now have over here. Um, some of my newer collections that I that I have, like the Basic Gray and Carpe Diem, and um, those sorts of things are down lower, and I still want to use those as collections before I start breaking them up. So my purpose of picking a kit from my stash is to cut into this paper, this unsorted paper pack. So I'm going to try to stay with this paper for the most part. So I think I'm going to pull, I think I'm going to use this paper as my inspiration paper. Even though it's a background, I'm still gonna choose this as my inspiration for the kit. That doesn't mean that all of the pages that I scrapbook will have this exact color scheme, but I'm gonna start here and then I might go off on a couple of tangents and that'll give me a couple of different color schemes to work with. So I'm gonna show you how that looks. So for example, let me pull out a couple of ways that this could go. So this could be a color scheme just off the top of my head this just popped out at me. So this scraptastic paper here, this one picks up on the blue that's in this one. This one picks up on the green that's in this one. And then this one coordinates and balances nicely with them. I think that the orange adds a little bit of contrast and it's 
complements the color scheme that I already have going. I can't just have blue. I mean, I could. I could stick with just blues and greens, but throwing in another color to balance it off, it just um, especially in if you use it in smaller amounts like this, just adds some pop to that color scheme. So, so far I have these four papers. Then I need a dark paper to add some contrast. So I'm gonna flip through and look for a dark. This one stands out, it's a map paper. It stands out, it's definitely dark. So I'll pull that out. I'm also going to look for, so I'm gonna look right now for a dark paper and for some type of high contrast, stripey, um, bold paper. And I'm not looking at every single paper in my pack here. There was a bold one. Oh, there's a dark one. Oh, here's another dark one. So let's see, this is a basic gray paper from the Aurora collection. Let's see how this looks with these. So that's quite nice. What's nice about it is that if you look really close at the stars in this, they are the same blue that's here and here. It's a turquoisey blue. So that provides a nice contrast and balance for me. And now I'm going to go back to looking for a bold, large pattern of some sort. Oops, there's another pretty blue that I might pull out. So let's put this aside for a moment. Ah, here's a nice bold. Let's keep looking because I'm not sure if that's going to work. There's a nice yellow. I'm not looking for any creams. I'm looking for white based papers and patterns here. This is very bold, but I'm not sure if it's going to work. Let's pull it out anyways. This is bold. Pull that out. Maybe this. Nothing else is standing out. Let's have a look at what I've got here. Obviously, this one works well, and so does this one, because they come from the same collection. So I will put those in. So they are from, actually this one is not, oh yeah, they are. They're from the Lemon Lush collection from Studio Calico. This one and this one. There we go. So this is what we look like so far. This is too much of an off-white. It's too cream-based for this layout. But let's have a look and see how some of these other ones, I'm especially interested in this Popsicle one from, from um, the Scraptastic Club. So let's see how this fits in there in little pops. Ooh, look at that. So I think we got ourselves a color scheme going on here. I kind of like that. So now anything else that I pick can come off of one of these papers. So I think of this as being the primary paper, and then from this I picked some secondary papers and then some contrasting papers, and now I can pick more papers that spin off of these because not every single paper is going to have, not every single layout is going to necessarily have this paper in it. So. I can, for example, add this one into the mix for another option for bold in case I don't want to go with that blue. 
And a nice large floral would be really nice. This is a floral, but a really nice oversized floral, which I don't think I'm going to find in this. So this is a spin-off paper from this. Whoops. It's a little bit darker, and it takes it in a slightly different direction. This, I don't think I like. This, again, that's too mustardy, the, or the yellow is wrong. This is the same, it's too... I don't know, it's kind of a different direction over here in this way. So our kit can range, within one kit you can still range from some warmer to some cooler. I don't know, I don't think this one goes. I'm going to take that one out. See this one, this dark works well with this, and this works well with this. So we've got a dark, a dark and a bold that go together as accents, and another dark and bold that go together as accents. So that gives me two different looks, really. So now my challenge is to find a large floral that's going to work with this. And I don't know if I have a large floral, but I'm going to have a look. So I'm going to put you on fast forward. So I just found the color blind kit and add on, which were from November of 2013. And as soon as I saw the name, I thought, oh yeah, that kit had some of the colors in it that I'm looking for. So this included that Glitz Designs collection called Finley, and it has lots of the colors that I'm looking for, but no large florals, unfortunately. So that is a shame. There, at least there's none left amongst the leftovers that I have but I think I can find some great embellishments in here. So I'm gonna to flip to my overhead camera now. So. Okay, so here's my huge mass of papers that I have picked. So I'm gonna go back to the ones that you guys already know about. So I left off here with, and I will tell you who makes all of these papers at the very end when I make my final selections. So, at this point, I have a dark and a bold that look like this, and another dark and a bold. They go together, and either one of them will look good with this collection, so I think I might keep them both in to have two different options. I don't want my layouts to look like they all kind of match with one another in this case. And then I have some greens and yellows and I have some blues and I have an orange for a little bit of contrast. So see how I go from green, from blue to green to yellow like that. And then I have orange here as a hit of contrast. Then I discovered that the Amy Tangerine Yes Please collection has a lot of the colors that I'm looking for. And I also found this somewhere as well. This is a Scraptastic paper, but this bold yellow and white stripe is really pretty and it's bold, which I like. So this and this, I was looking for a large floral, but this is a floral. And so, and it has that really beautiful yellow that is, and it has orange and it has some of the green. So it doesn't, so let me move some of these things so that you can see how this goes with the rest of the kit. So see, that works well with the kit. It also introduces some pink, which if I need to pull in pink into a layout, I'm actually not going to include pink in this kit, but it gives me options for picking some more stuff from my stash if I want to. It looks quite good over here with these things, but it also looks good over here with these. So, uh, so this is the floral that I'm going to go with. Of course, I already also have this floral, but I like to have a couple of multicolored 
um, papers in a kit and this is the only multicolored paper that I have so far so it's really important otherwise these are all sort of except for this one which I'm pretty sure is going to be used up quickly on a background uh, so it was important that I had that I wish I had another one but you can always bring multicolors in with your with your embellishments and there's also this this strip actually caught my my attention I think I might use the strip this also adds some boldness so this paper is nice on either side because I also the other so I talked about my inspiration piece I talked about choosing colors from my inspiration piece that draw from it and coordinate with it I talked about a dark and a bold in addition to the kit and now the other side of that is you need some softness so this provides some softness this is a really beautiful pattern and this strip provides something that coordinates with a lot of the colors that are already in the kit this gray also creates some so some softness and I had a couple of other things here that were picked out that could be soft so I have this transparency and that creates some softness and I have this pattern paper from the Scraptastic Club it's beautiful and it creates some softness it looks gorgeous with this kit this looks quite nice with the kit it's a little formal for everything in this kit is very casual and this because it's all it's like a damask pattern I don't think it quite goes, so I'm actually going to, I've got an abundance of choices, I'm not hard up, so I'm going to say no to this. But, I'm going to pick some softness. I think this is too warm for the, this is soft, but I think it's too warm for the color scheme that I'm going for, so I'm going to put it aside. It's got that beige color in it, so these are my soft options. I don't really feel like I need three softs but you know what this is a large floral so maybe I will keep all of those my bolds and darks bring those into the mix so there we go this is looking like a kit now this is just I really don't need this much I really don't need this much so I'm going to cut those from the kit although I might just leave this in. There. So just to summarize, in the center here I have my inspiration piece, which is this, and from this I drew all of these other papers. I have colors that pick from it, so I've got some greens and yellows over here, I've got some blues over here, and then I have this orange which contrasts with the others and another version of orange that contrasts with the others. I have two florals including one multicolor floral that picks that brings together a bunch of colors that are otherwise separate papers on the in the kit. Then I have some softs including a large floral and two more structured patterns. And then on the other side of all of this, I have some dark patterns that could serve as good matting and accents to kind of add some, some contrast. And I have two bold patterns that will also provide contrast in, uh, and emphasis. So that's how my kit evolved. I have a total, this is a much bigger kit than I was expecting to pick. So I have a total of 16 pattern papers and I'm going to tell you what they are right here. I have from Studio Calico from the Lemon Lush collection. This one is called Analytics. That's my inspiration piece. I have from Amy Tangerine Yes Please. This is called Commit. Also from Amy Tangerine Yes Please. This is called Hopeful and I like both sides of it for the kit. This one is an exclusive Scraptastic paper. It's called Garden Party. This one is also from Amy Tangerine, Yes Please. It's called Play. This one is also from Amy Tangerine, Yes Please, and it's called Priority. This one is from Basic Gray Bow Ties. 
and it's called Tether Ball. This one is from Crepe Paper Confetti, and it's called Sparkling. This one is from Scraptastic, and it's called Succulents. This one is from Fancy Pants from the Nautical Collection, and it's called Piece by Piece. This one is from Studio Calico from the Lemon Lush Collection. This one is also from the Lemon Lush Collection from Studio Calico. This one is from uh, Fancy Pants from the Making Waves Collection, and it's called Beach Shorts. This one is from Studio Calico from the Abroad Collection, and it's with Sassafras, and it's called Bucket List. This one is from Basic Grey Aurora, and it's called Pisces. This one is from Scraptastic Kit Club, and it is called Popsicles. And that's my kit. So, I'm going to spread out the papers, and then I'll start picking some embellishments. Okay, so I have my inspiration piece in the center and one color scheme over here and another color scheme option over here. They all look good together though. The whole thing could be all mixed up if you wanted. And now I'm going to have a look at what embellishments came in the November 2013 Scraptastic Colorblind Kit because I think that these letters would look awesome. I'm pretty sure that these frames will look great as well. I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be able to pick lots of stuff from this. So if I selectively avoid the reds, this is great. Like, look at this. They're beautiful with this, if you forget about the red. So this is definitely going to be part of my pick these letter stickers. So this is the Findlay collection. These are the letter stickers from Glitz Designs. These are Amy Tangerine thickers. There are not many of these that don't have red on them, but there's some. So I'm going to keep these as well. These are the Titles and Accents sticker sheet from the Findlay collection. This was a cut file that I cut up that I might be able to use little bits of. Okay, so here's my kit. I've covered up all of the, I've covered up my inspiration piece, but somewhere under all of this is my paper, and then here are all of my embellishments. So at the end there, I was just kind of throwing stuff in that I thought might work, 
And again, I'm going to be scrapbooking right here at my own table, so it's okay if I don't have things like wood veneers and brads and stuff like that and ink. I'll just pick what I need as I as I scrap. So the thickers that I have picked out here are Amy Tangerine Scene in this turquoise or teal color, uh, Fitzgerald in turquoise, Twilight in navy blue foam. Uh, these are fantastic in uh, green foam. These are Charmed from Dear Lizzie. These are Journal from Amy Tangerine. And these ones are Boardwalk in a glitter yellow color. Yay! So this is where I'm starting for International Scrapbooking Day. This is my kit. Uh, let me know if you are making yourself a kit for International Scrapbooking Day or if you're just making a kit because it's that time of year when there's lots of crops happening. So let me know how your kit picking process is going and uh, take care and have a really great scrappy week. And here's the information on my Facebook group, which is Mercy Tiara's 27 day challenge. Moira O'Reilly and myself will be hosting an international scrapbooking day crop over there. So make sure that you join and check out all that we have to offer. There are tons of really fabulous prizes and fun activities and challenges going on throughout the day on May 7th. So I hope to see you all there. Take care and have a great scrappy week.